the Stranger Things podcast, season two, episode three, The Polylog. Mr. Henderson, you know the rules. Five at a time. Yep. One, two, three, four, and five. Ten. You already have five books checked out. My mistake. However, I am on a curiosity voyage, and I need my paddles to travel. These books, these books are my paddles. Five at a time. Are you shitting me? Excuse me? What the hell is that? Miss Anderson! I need my paddle! Hello and welcome to the Stranger Things podcast, a fan podcast dedicated to the Netflix original series, Stranger Things. I'm Daryl. And I'm Addie. How are you? Good. Good. So have you had a good week? Yeah. I have too. It's been a crazy busy week for me, as you well know. I've been working even more insane hours than normal, but uh, glad to be sitting here on a Sunday afternoon chatting with... My beautiful daughter about Stranger Things. Colby's not in here. <laughs> and there it is. Sibling rivalry. So today we're talking about season two, episode three, The Polywog. And this is a really fun episode. I mean, this was one, you know, if you're joining us for the first time, and if you are, welcome. The The premise of our show is Addie has seen the entire season, although only once, and I am watching it week to week, so I don't know what... What it happened has happened or will happen beyond season two, episode three at this point. And so this was one I watched it a week ago because as soon as we finish, as soon as I finish editing the podcast each week, then I can go watch the next episode or technically as soon as we finish recording. I, I don't want to get any any new information prior to recording. So but anyway, holy cow, you get to the end of this episode and I was just like, what? I can't wait another week. But I but I've had to do that. So this one was I'm really looking forward to chatting about this one with you, Addie. All right. <laughs> all right. Now, Addie, um, we may have to have you po- push all those off to the floor. She's got a whole desk full of Funko Pop figurines. And so if they become too much of a distraction and I end up doing this podcast as a solo show, then we're going to have to get rid of those so you can focus on um, the no, conversation. Th- these, <laughs> I have 18 over here. Yeah. yeah. And you have what, two? I have two. So it was you her should... idea. Hey, we should grab some pop characters with us for the show today. Okay. I ended up with two. She ended up with 18. <laughs> I don't know. Well, today, as I said, we're talking about season two, episode three of the Polywog. Addie, why don't you uh, tell the fine folks listening who wrote and directed this episode? It is written by just, is it Doble or Doble? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. It's written by Justin Doble, and he also wrote um, The Body and The Bathtub in season one. And uh, it's directed by Sean Levy, who directed Holly Jolly and The Body in season one. What are you typing? Well, I was just chatting with some of our folks who are joining us for the live uh, stream here on uh, Facebook, and one of them said, hey, Daryl, has anyone ever told you that you look like the son of James Hetfield and Glenn Beck? I mean, that is a compliment. I've never heard Glenn Beck, but I've heard James Hetfield a lot. I mean, Who? The lead singer of Metallica. Who? Are you serious? You know Metallica. I probably heard of them, but I don't yeah. really know. Okay. Well, we'll have to introduce you to Metallica. Although I will say I was quite proud of Addie. She and I were shopping at the mall the other day. Well, we went and picked up uh, Max in Halloween costume. And man, she was just, she knows her, she knows her Nirvana. And I was quite proud of that. So were we walking through what, like JCPenney? Macy's? Yeah, we were leaving. We came in through JCPenney and, uh, that was, uh, you were just telling me all the things you know about Nirvana, and it was quite a lot. Nirvana's from the 90s, though. We're talking about the 80s here in uh, our podcast course as we talk about Stranger Things. But before we do that, we've got a contest to reconcile. Can I announce the winner? You can draw the winner. So we had what m- might be uh, the perfect amount of entries. That is 11. When we last spoke to you guys, we had one that was kind of a sort of I- entry. Caitlin didn't really intend for it to be an entry, but then she was like, yeah, uh, I said Caitlin. I meant Kaylee. Sorry about that. So we had 10 others uh, send in theirs. And so we're going to, we have the, for those of you joining us in the live stream, we have the Dustin Stranger Things hat 
And you can see here, I've that got would be them mine. off to the side here. I'm going to try to do this on camera here. Hey, I was going to draw the name. I'm putting them in. There's one and two and three. My hat is really dirty. And four. I'm setting up all five. my pop characters over here. Okay. Six. <laughs> Doesn't care. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And lastly, eleven. So uh -oh, one fell out. I put it back in. Uh, giving these a nice little shake. Addy will also give them a shake, although I try not to do it too much because uh, maybe just a little pat here on the bottom uh, so you don't pop any of them out. And make sure you're on camera when you draw that so we're all above board here. Can I just stir it with my hand? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Mixing the soup. Uh huh. And the winner, as we said, is going to get their choice of a $25 gift card to either Amazon or Target. Target. Okay, general. Oh, hang on. Drum roll. I'm going to pick one from the very bottom. Let's do this one. They're all folded up a billion times, so I can't see the name. That's right. We, we made sure to fold them all. Oops. So sorry, Lucas. The names <laughs> are not clear. I managed to knock down both Lucas's at the same time. Wow. All right. And the winner is. Drum roll. Oh. Drum. Uh, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Who is it? Andrew. Andrew is our winner. Andrew might be in the live show. He, he was here, said he won't be here long, sadly, but figured I would pop in and say hi. So congratulations, Andrew. So here's what you need to do to claim your prize. Email uh, feedback at goldenspiralmedia.com. Feedback at goldenspiralmedia.com. That comes to me. And let me know two things. One, do you want Amazon or Target? Two, what is your email address? I think that's all I need. I don't think I need your physical address. Uh, if it turns out I do, then I'll, I'll have it, your email address to contact you and get that sorted out. So congratulations, Andrew. Thanks to everybody who entered. And we had some really Can cool we entries come in this week. Can we second place in third place? Uh, not for this contest. Just no. to see how close they were to... <laughs> <laughs> Here's first loser and second loser. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everybody who entered. We'll do another contest before the season is over. So Should stick we just with us. keep those names in there then? No, that'll be a completely different contest. With <laughs> I feel bad for all of them, though. Well. I'm sorry I have a heart. <laughs> Since when? All right. Addie and I will discuss where and when and how she managed to develop a heart while you guys listen to the episode recap. Dustin finds an unusual creature in his garbage and decides to look after it after sneaking it into the house in his homemade Ghostbusters trap. Eleven is angry with Hopper for false promises that she will leave the cabin where she has been stuck for 326 days. In flashbacks, Eleven finds out that Hopper has been leaving food for her and reveals her presence to him. He takes her to his grandfather's old cabin to live in secret. Bob drives Will to school, advising him to face up to his fears. He recounts how he managed to beat a series of recurring nightmares by facing the frightening aspect of his dream and telling it to go away. Nancy and Jonathan resolve to tell Barb's parents the truth about her disappearance. Dustin tries to discover what kind of creature he has found and takes the creature who he calls D'Artagnan, or Dart, to school to show the other kids. Will describes his experiences and concludes that Dart is from the Upside Down. While they are arguing, Dart escapes into the school. The boys and Max go looking for it. Eleven leaves the cabin to look for Mike, ending up at the school. She sees Mike and Max together and thinks they are flirting. Joyce watches a tape from Halloween night when Will had an episode about the Upside Down and sees an image of Will's vision. While searching for Dart, Will finds the creature in one of the school's bathrooms. He has another episode where he is in the Upside Down facing the shadow creature. Taking Bob's advice to stand up to his fears, Will confronts the shadow monster, but it forces a tentacle down his throat. Ah, uh, don't you hate it when you get a tentacle forced down your throat? Especially one from a creepy shadow monster. Yep, hate it when that happens. I know, dude. It really puts a damper on your day. But you know what takes you out of the damper? Talking watching about the, Stranger oh, Things. Oh, I was going to say watching Stranger Things because I'd rather watch it than talk about it with you. Uh, I can't argue with that. That's good Good logic. Just like, would you rather meet the actors or talk about them? Yeah, meet them. Exactly. But alas, today, right now, we must talk about it. If Finwolf is listening to this... 
Call Did me. you just talk over the bumper music? <laughs> yes. Jeez. Are you a rookie at this? <laughs> Is this your you first just, time? Did you just play the music over my <laughs> awesome voice? Anyway, what I forgot to <laughs> what I forgot to mention is that that recap uh, we pulled that from the great folks over at the Stranger Things Wikia. So go check out all the great work going on over there. If you want to know about an episode or who that person was in an episode, uh, or or different things, uh, different Easter eggs and things like that that you can find in the episode, it's a great resource, and that's found over at StrangerThings.Wikia.com. dot com. Um, actually, no, it's http dot dot slash slash. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger things dot wikia dot com slash parentheses. <laughs> the parentheses I put in there. So well, I you messed forget. up the whole website then. Okay. Well, let's talk about the flashback portions of this. So we we've got some stuff in the past where we've figured out some of the flashback storyline, but there was, I mentioned last week, there were still some holes to get filled this is in. This not how the episode starts. It needs to be in chronological order. You're turning into Instagram. So if we do it, okay. So if we do, here's why we don't do it in chronological order. Cause then you have a scene like, um, uh, the boys talking about dart and then it goes to Nancy and Steve. And then it goes to, Joyce and and Bob, and then it goes back to the boys talking about Dart, and it just it makes it hard to have those discussions. Who cares? It's in chronological order, and they can follow along. So anyway, in flashback, we have uh, some of those holes filled in from what we were still missing last time. I'm thinking this is probably all the flashback. If I had to guess, obviously you know, and I don't, but I I don't know of any questions I have left at this point in terms of like the only question I had was how did how did Hopper and Eleven, you know, connect? And then how did they start at the cabin? Well, that's what we got answered this week. So we see that uh, Eleven sees Hopper at the food box and then she des- decides to reveal herself to him, which is cool. It means she trusts him, right? And um, we learned that it the cabin was Hopper's granddad's. So, and it was cool because he, he tells Eleven, you know, this is going to be your new home. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was nice because she hasn't really had a home yet. This is going to be her first real home. And she like repeats the word home. Yeah. And whenever, whenever they're like uh, cleaning the house and stuff. Yeah. So it shows her like pulling off some like blankets and like coughing from the dust. And then she starts sweeping and she doesn't know how to sleep <laughs> when Hopper, Hopper has to go um, show her how to do that. And I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Potato never taught her how to sweep, sweep the floor. Really? Potato. Paint the fence. He wasn't Mr. Miyagi. What? Sweep the floor, paint the fence. Those are what Mr. Miyagi, the Karate Kid. You've seen the Karate Kid a dozen times. No, I haven't. At least twice. No, I haven't. I don't think I've seen even one of them all the way through. Well, your mom watches them every time they're on TV. I just assumed you had soaked some of them up. I know like the wax on, wax off. Exactly. Sweep the floor, paint the fence, wax on, wax off. N- no, what? <laughs> okay, fine. Um, we also kind of get the introduction of the don't be stupid rules, which we've heard up to this point. We've heard the about don't be stupid and that we knew that there were rules and stuff. They are always keep the curtains drawn, only open the door, you know, after you hear the secret knock and never go out alone, especially in the daylight. There's a really awesome shirt hot topic that has all those rules on it. Yeah. Yeah, we saw it this weekend. Yeah, I wanted to get it and you were like, no, we're here for um, hoodies. <laughs> we were. We were. We had a limited budget and we had a very, uh, very, li- we were looking for very specific things. I would have paid you four whole dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I feel like Bob over here. Woo. Kenny Rogers. Woo. Please stop. Mr. Mom. Woo. Please, please stop. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like my third hour teacher. Woo. Stop it. Seriously. <laughs> you sound exactly like. Uh, this is the thing in geometry. Woo. Oh, you know my class. I do. Okay. Um, Actually, it's a woohoo. One thing I thought was really interesting in, in the flashback scenes. At one point we see Hopper. This was, gosh, this was a heartbreaking scene. We see Hopper reading to L. Do you know what book he was reading to her? Anne of Green Gables. Do you know what the significance of Anne of Green Gables is? Um, he read it to his daughter when she was dying in the hospital. 
That's right. So that's really sad. Now, it was pretty obvious that he was he sees Elle as his daughter, his daughter or his, you know, he, he, she's kind of fulfilling that that need or desire that he has. Um, but this is pretty, pretty clear, obvious evidence of that. But it's also sad. I mean, it reminds you that um, his daughter was taken from him by disease. And, and that's just the worst thing any parent could ever go through but it also is is nice because he's getting kind of a second chance to be a dad and so that's that's really cool too but it was a sad scene for me because you know she asks about her mom and he says that her mom is what does he say her mom is gone gone? yeah so you know friends don't lie do you think that when she finds out that her mom is technically still alive, is is she going to consider that a lie, a lie? Because, I mean, really, her mom is gone. I mean, she's, like, mentally gone. So, what do you think? Is that a lie or not? Mm, I don't know. It kind of depends on how Eleven took it. Yeah. Because whenever she was um, trying to find Will and Barb in the Upside Down, um, like, in the bathtub and... Season one. Yeah. Um, whenever she found Barb dead, she said, gone, gone, right. gone, 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 gone. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so if gone meant dead, then then she'll probably take it as a lie. But I don't know. Yeah, it's a good point. I forgot about that. That same language being used in that, that situation. And then Eleven cries. So... Yeah, it was a really sad scene for me. I don't know. I just there was a couple of scenes in this in this episode that were kind of heartbreakers or heart kind of pulled at your heartstrings, if you will. And this was one of them for me. You skipped my note. I didn't mean to. Which one? Whenever we were talking about the rules, uh, you you read off the rules. Never got out alone, especially in the daylight. Mm-hmm. And then right under that, I said, uh, actually, as she <laughs> leaves the house, she says, "Not stupid," and then walks over the wire. Yeah. But she she does it anyway. <laughs> like um the, the the don't be stupid rules. She does it anyway and says not stupid. Yeah, which I mean it's just perfect example of of uh kids. It's easy to say kids, but any of us who who don't understand the the full you know, in this case, the danger that that lurks out there. He, she really feels like he's being unfair to her, and I can understand why. But he is trying to protect her, and she says not stupid, but really she is pretty stupid by doing that. But that's mean. Don't bully her. I'm not bullying her. I'm saying she made a she made a bad choice. In current time now, um, opening scene, Dustin and his mom. What were your thoughts here? Um, I thought it was pretty funny because she was like. She asked if he was constipated again. So right. He, to, he, he had to have uh, been constipated before. And um, I don't know. Their, their relationship is pretty funny. And what? No, it was, it, was hilarious. it was so funny. Both of them being awkward. The acting here was just such good comedic yeah. acting. Yeah. Uh, whenever I was rewatching the scene earlier, they were just, it was so awkward in between. It was so funny. And I liked it. He he played it off really well. Like, oh, I just rigged it to make it sound like there was a monster in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't. I would have loved to have been on set during while. The, I, but at the same time, I don't know how you could have kept a straight face watching these both of these actors yeah. do this scene. It was so funny and so well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think of the cat in this scene? Do you remember what the cat did? He hissed at it. Yes. That's probably an Easter egg or a shout out to a different movie. Do you know which one? No, E.T. What? No, that's not a bad guess, but no. Uh, we've, got, we've got one of our feedbackers who will reveal that answer. So you'll have to stay tuned for the notes from the Upside Down section to get that one answered. Um, Let me just scroll down here. No, no, it's one of the audios. Darn. <laughs> so he takes the creature to his room and plops it out. It's this weird slug. It's a polywog looking thing and totally. Did, okay. Did this scene remind you of any, of any movie once he got it into his room and starts feeding it and putting it into the aquarium thing? It, is this, did this give you the vibes of any other movie you've seen from the eighties? No, no gremlins. Maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally gave me the gremlin vibes particularly the, the feeding it. And cause I just, it's like, you know, the two rules with gizmo were what? Don't feed it after midnight. 
And don't get it wet. Yeah, exactly. So you now we don't know if it was after midnight or not. We certainly don't know if those two rules apply or what rules apply to the polywalk, but him getting it home and hiding it and feeding it late at night uh, definitely gave me the uh, the vibes of of grim ones. Um, and I like how he names it Dart because um, my uh, aunt has a dog named D'Artagnan. Oh, really? Yeah, Aunt Missy. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's her dog's name. Like the really fluffy. One. Have you seen him? I don't think I have. Does she call him Dart or D'Artagnan? D'Artagnan. Let's start calling him Dart. I know. Me and Colby were just calling him Dart. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting. He doesn't like heat. So the, the turtle is a reptile, and so there's a heat lamp in there. I was wondering if he doesn't like light and heat or just heat. I was heat. wondering that, too. Yeah. Like whenever I rewatched it today, I was like, wait, does it just not like light? Or Because I'm sure like not every lamp they had uh, gave off gave off like that much heat. Yeah, like the one in the AV club. I don't think that was a heat lamp. I mean, every light puts off was, some heat. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was thinking that because I don't think there's any question that this thing is from the upside down, and I mean, Will all but confirms that anyway. But the upside down is kind of this dark and dreary place. So I would imagine. The creatures there are not used, you know, or they are used to a lower light level. So uh, I would think that light, he would be more uh, sensitive to light, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Probably. I guess we'll find out. Or maybe we won't. But um, what do you think about the next scene? The one with Hopper? Yeah, Hopper and Elle. He's trying to make up with, to her, you know, with, with him coming home late from the night before and stuff like that. I won't. Um, a triple decker ego extravaganza. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to get your take on this scene first because I know how you love egos and everything sweet. You have got a quite a sweet tooth, just like your mom does. And uh, she doesn't like chocolate, though. Yeah, yours is definitely more. Uh, but man, when I saw this, I was just like, Addie would. This is all up your, all up your alley. Yep. Yeah. Give it to me. <laughs> it was pretty funny, though. I mean, I don't know. I liked it. I mean, it was like whipped cream and, and Eggos. What was it? Chocolate chips maybe were in there. I don't know. Probably a lot of syrup, I'm guessing, too. Mm-hmm. They are Eggos. Yeah. But, you know, it seems like they they kind of uh, reconnect a little bit anyway, um, at least for a moment. And then um, she starts, uh, he, said, he asked if she had, you know, visited Will or, or Mike again. She wants to see him. He, he says he'll see him. She'll see him soon. And this is when she calls him out. Friends don't lie. You said I'd see him soon on day 21, day 205, now on day 326. Um, and then he's like, so what? You're counting days like you're some sort of prisoner here. So I don't remember what all I said last week when it was clear that she was getting frustrated with having been cooped up in the cabin. You know, I think I said that she was still kind of respecting the boundaries, which she was at that point. Obviously this week she's had enough and she, the boundaries, she is no longer respecting those. Again, I don't know that I blame her though. Do you, I mean, she doesn't have the knowledge that he has. We don't know. Remember last season, uh, Addie, I almost called you L. Um, the very, one of the very last scenes was him getting into the car with the guys in the suits. And we still don't know what, what was said to him. You know, yeah. I would assume it was similar to some of the discussions that happened with the wheelers at their house, you know, that Nancy and Steve were talking about last week in the library. He was basically threatened and stuff like that. It would be my guess, but I don't know. But yeah, he knows the dangers that are out there. Um, and she, she clearly doesn't, but she uses her little force powers and, uh, crashes the table and she slams the door and she's had enough. Yeah. You ever do that? I wish. Yeah. You have to use your hands to slam the door. <laughs> I know. Right. Mm-hmm. So hard. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's talk about the scene at the buyer's house when uh, Joyce is running late because she can't find something. It turns out to be her keys. No surprise. How many times is that now? Like three? Once in the first season, twice already this season? Yeah, that's her thing. She really needs to get like a command strip and just put it next to her door with to put her keys on. It definitely needs some place to, to, yeah, to put them. Um... Did you, I don't know. What were your thoughts? Did you get any, I don't know what to, how to ask this question. Did, did you think anything was out of place in this scene? Bob was there. Yeah. I guess it was the first night or first time Bob had stayed the night. Yeah. Anything else? 
Is this a trick question? No, I'm just, I want, I want to know your opinion. I'm about to give you my opinion. And I just was trying to see if, if you had anything that you thought was out of place here. Her keys. <laughs> Technically, yes. Yeah. Okay. I just think, okay. And I don't know, you know, back in episode one, Corey called in and was like, I don't trust Bob. And I was like, oh man, I hadn't thought of that. And now I can't like get that out of my mind. It just seemed fishy to me that everyone's looking all over for the keys. And then all of a sudden Bob finds them and he was like, yeah, there was a pair of jeans on top of them. Why was he looking under the jeans though? Well, you, when you, when you're looking for keys, you know, you're, you're looking everywhere. I don't know. I just think that he was, I think he hid the keys or he had them on him the whole time and was waiting to reveal the keys until he knew that Joyce wouldn't have time to take Will to school. And then he would be like, hey, I could take Will to school. Easy peasy. And so then he could get Will alone. This is total conspiracy. I'm like, I'm like, Corey, I'm like Tunsus the driving cat. Like you told me Bob's not, not a good guy and I'm totally with you. And now I'm driving that car with Bob off the cliff. I'm like going all the way. I'm committed to, to driving off the cliff with this thing. I think that Bob hid the keys so that Joyce would be late and he would have a chance to talk to Will and he could encourage Will to confront the shadow monster because he knows about the shadow monster because he is from the lab. He's a plant from the lab and he knew that having Will uh, confront the shadow monster would, I don't know what, but he just knew that that would kind of um, be what they wanted to happen. That's my crazy tinfoil hat theory. It's way out there. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's right. Well, you would know. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think Bob's a good person. Okay. I don't. I don't trust Bob at all. And so now I'm just like making up stories about him so that I can not like him just all like, the more. You don't trust it even like when he breathes. Just like, don't do that. You're doing it wrong. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't trust Bob. Am I alone? Let me know um, what you think of the uh, the Bob theory. Uh, but they're in the car. And so, yeah, he does drive Will to school. And he tells Will about Mr. Mr. Baldo the Clown. Okay. So this one's um, a great theory. Um, just, okay. You might want to take a seat for this. It's pretty great. Okay. So, I'm sitting down. Um, Bob is from... Maine, which I asked you that earlier because um, I wasn't sure if it revealed it or not. Yeah, this was the episode we learned he was from Maine. Yeah, I was too lazy to go find it. So <laughs> okay. I just asked you. So, um, yeah, Bob's from Maine. And he said um, whenever he was a kid, a clown offered him a balloon. Sound familiar? Yeah. In Maine? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, it takes place in Maine. Yeah. Um. And Derry, to be exact. Yeah. It's D-E-R-R-Y. And the clown wouldn't go away until he faced his fear, which um, that's how in the original it miniseries, that's how mm -hmm. uh, they got Pennywise to like go away. Besides like the battery acid and that at the beginning part, whenever they were like kids. But um, I mean, that didn't really do anything. Uh, but like the main way to get him to like stop messing with you is to just like stand up to him and not be scared yep and he would have been like around like the same it would have been like the same time that pennywise would have been around so it he would have been like the right age and stuff so that what if that was pennywise and i don't know mr baldo was just like a cover-up name yeah maybe well pennywise is bald not entirely bald no but he's bald on top like if you saw someone like that, you would say he's bald. I guess. Well, it's it's, it's not a crazy theory. I mean, Stephen King is definitely one of the um, sources of inspiration for this show. So it might have just been their way of paying homage to um, to Stephen King, and and obviously it ties into the show because of Finn Wolfhard's um, participation in that in that project. So all right, I like it. I like it. Okay. 
Uh, Dustin takes Dart to school. By the way, we we, we heard the uh, the scene in the library. That was our opener for today's show. Just a f- hilarious that scene. Was really I fun. was really glad you chose that one for the the opener today. Um, also hilarious was Dustin's entrance into the into Mr. Clark's classroom. Yeah, he just like busts in there and erupts. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you remember what Mr. Clark was teaching on when he got there? No, I don't remember. I, I didn't don't, actually rewatch the entire episode. Yeah, I don't remember the the. It was the the guy who had the crowbar stuck through his head. And, you know, he wasn't the same after the, that. The iron rod, you mean? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's kind of a parallel to Dust, uh, Dustin. Listen to me. Uh, Will. I mean, Will had an experience, life-changing experience, and he's he's not the same. We've heard Hopper say that. And we've heard... The doctor. Was it the doctor? Yeah. Somebody else said that things won't be the same. I thought it was the doctor. Might have been. So, anyway, uh, Dustin shows Dart to the boys. Uh, actually Max is there too. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was weird because later in the episode, they kicked her out. They kicked her out. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but Will flashes to the slug that he spit out of his mouth, uh, and the sounds of the upside down. So this is what I was information. I was pulling in. I mentioned last week that I thought it was the slug and here's why. Um, I think I nailed this one. I actually got one of my predictions spot on, I think. Yeah. I mean, but okay. I don't understand why he didn't say anything. Like, yeah. I mean, the bell rang like two seconds after that, but they could have walked together in the hall and he could have been like, wait guys. Yeah. I mean, he tells Mike and I think that's probably because of the bonding moment that Mike and Will shared last week after Will flashed to the upside down and Mike took him home. But still, I mean, he should at least tell Dustin so he's not living with it in his house. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, totally with you. So Mike and Lucas think it would be a good idea to tell Hopper about Dart. And Dustin is afraid that Hopper will kill Dart. And this is ridiculous. I mean, Dustin, I know he's a kid. And so kids will be kids and we all do dumb things, especially when we're kids. But this is incredibly, incredibly dumb because they don't know what this thing is or what it's going to grow to become. It's Will has a very strong uh, idea that it's from the upside down. In my opinion, there's no question here. Dart must die. They need to take that thing out and drop a brick on its head or something. Run it over with a car. Just like mom's old phone. <laughs> yeah, it needs to die. There's nothing good that can come of Dart, in my opinion. Nothing at all. But Dustin, because he cares about it, you know, he's got this bond with it, and he's honestly, part of it is his own pride. He's telling Mr. Clark, whatever I show you here, it's my discovery, I discovered this, and he's got his own pride in the way, and it's really, I'm afraid of what it's going to cause. This thing's growing rapidly, and uh, I don't know what it is. I think it could be anything from just some crazy creature from the upside down to another uh, another demogorgon. It could be a baby demogorgon because it's like, and we don't see any teeth. We don't see the mouth flapping open like, like, like the demogorgon style. I don't know. I just, you know, nothing good can come of this. All right. I know you can't say anything. You have that, you have that look like you're, you can't. So I, I understand that. And again, we're, we're kind of following the storylines along here. So, uh, I don't understand why they kicked Max out at the end of school. Do you? Do you have any ideas? I mean, I mean, she, clearly she's not fully one of them, but they had her in earlier. She already knew about it. I don't know. Maybe because Mike just got fed up. This is before, you know, he and they had had their little conversation well, in the gym. Because yeah, it was already obvious that he didn't like her. So maybe uh, yeah. he like told them like off camera that he didn't. They, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. They, because, I mean, they were spending a lot of time with her and he didn't want to. So maybe they are just like, okay, so we don't have to spend that much time. So they just kicked her out. Maybe. I mean, I'd like, I'd just like to know, other than it just being this kind of convenience thing where now she's trying to get in and, and she provides the escape route uh, for Dart. I mean, it, I don't know. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me other than it was just kind of written into the show to give them a convenience, a convenient way to get Dart out of there. 
Will finds Dart in the bathroom. And this is really where it made me wonder if it was going to be, if it was going to turn into to the Demogorgon because Will looks at it. He's like, I'm not going to hurt you. And then it goes. Rawr! And of course, Will runs away, flashes into the upside down and tries to confront the smoke monster and the smoke monster. <laughs> like This is lost. The shadow monster. And it, of course, it, it infiltrates him or just pours itself into his facial pores. Great ending, by the way. I'm not for Will. No, but as far as like a cliffhanger style, like suspenseful ending, that like made the episode for me. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was the end of the season? Oh my gosh. I mean, that would be terrible. I'm a little bit worried after that look you're giving me <laughs> like, oh, crap, there's going to be a big cliffhanger at the end of the season, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty typical. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know you can't say too much about Will here. The thing that, okay, we we saw in the trailers, there's a scene where Will is outside and he is completely just um, out of it. He's just standing there and Joyce is standing in front of him, screaming at him, you know, to snap out of it. And he's just standing there. And all the other kids are there with him? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to see in the next episode. Because Joyce is on her way to the school. He's outside. He's being consumed by this smoke. This Boy, that's that's the thing now, isn't it? The shadow yeah, monster. The shadow monster. Um, so I, I think that that's what we're going to see in the next episode. But um, I guess I'll find out shortly. Can I just tell you? No. You can't spoil me and you can't spoil anyone else listening to my position. But it's not spoilery position. if it's in the trailer. But I don't know when. I mean, there might be, it might not be next episode. There might be something else that leads up to it. This is my prediction it's of in, what that it's is. It's in season three, actually. <laughs> I know that's not true. I know that's not true. Okay. Let's talk about Elle. Let's talk about her storyline. You mentioned already. She says she's not stupid. She breaks all the rules one by one. She opens the blinds. <laughs> She, what was it? She opens the blinds. She goes out in a day. What was the third third rule? She left, uh, she opened the door without the knocking. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she went out in the daytime. You already said that though. I know. I was just trying to work, work through Talk them Talk over me, I see. Yeah. Try to think that you're more important. Yeah. I don't know. What'd you think of her, her out, out? out uh her, her field trip i thought it, i thought it was funny how she just left like that mm -hmm. just breaking every single rule like it, it was funny it was funny it wasn't enough just to open the door and leave it was yeah. like no you you had to do like if you're gonna break every rule you're gonna break every rule that's right yeah that was funny um so she encounters the mom and the and the and the child this is where she, you know again she's being stupid it's one thing to say okay hopper i think your rules are stupid but surely like does she, uh, go back to season 1 when she encountered people you know she she had a fear about like there that there was that fear instinct that kept her safe and she doesn't really seem to have that working to her advantage. She, she just stands there with the mom and her daughter and then does the weird thing with the swing set. And so what are they going to do? They're going to call the police, obviously. So I don't, she just doesn't seem to be even employing the, the bit of common sense that she had last season. True. I think she should have left like in a normal way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the lady said school, or she said school, and the lady pointed to where it was. She could have just said thank you and walked off, and that would have been the end of it. Exactly. Yeah. Way to go, Eleven. Great job. Yeah. You had, you had one job, <laughs> and you didn't do it right. <laughs> but instead, the lady calls, um, well, the police station, Officer Powell then radios Hopper and says, hey... Hopper, you know the, those things about the Russian girl that we were hearing? I think they might be true. And Hopper's getting that on his walkie-talkie speaker. So I'm pretty sure the doctor, Dr. Owens, heard what, what Powell said. And so now he knows that Eleven is out there somewhere. So the whole thing, again, the rules are there to protect her. They're not stupid. And she's just blown the whole thing, you know, in, in half a day. I don't know what's going to happen now because, you know, she's, I don't think she's going back to the house or back to the cabin. We saw on the trailer that she's eventually going to end up at her mom's house. 
but I don't know if that's where she's going next or not. Um, but of course we needed drama. We needed her to, to get out of the cabin at some point for this season in order to create the drama. But I'm just disappointed in how, I don't want to say stupid. She's making stupid decisions. She's not stupid. She's obviously very, very intelligent, but she's making stupid decisions and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in her decision making. Okay. Because she's not that stupid. That's my point. She even, she even tells us she's not stupid. Right. And then goes and does stupid things. Hmm. That's just what Colby used to call stranger things. <laughs> yeah. Forgot about that. Disowning him from the family. Yeah. Okay. But the one thing she does do is she makes her way to the school. Now, I know you've got some thoughts about this. I was kind of disappointed. Actually, no, I was very disappointed. Um, she wasn't supposed to interfere with um, Mike and Eleven's relationship, and she did. You talking about she, Max? Yeah, Max. And but like, okay, honestly, Max kind of reminds me of myself a lot because there'll be like a group of friends, and I'm like, ooh, I want to join their friend group, and so I'll just like try so hard, and they're just like, I, like just just a couple people will be like. No, I don't like you. But then the other ones will be like, yeah, you're a friend. But yeah, I thought it was hilarious whenever she made her fall on the skateboard. <laughs> yeah. This was another one of those kind of heartstrings scenes for me because you see like Mike and Elle just barely missing each other in the hallways. And I then know. she can hear him and she recognizes his voice and she gets there and she totally misunderstands the situation. Like she thinks Mike and Max are flirting and they're not. At all. Well, it kind of seems like Max might be. Well, I don't know. Maybe. I. Th she's kind of acting like it. I don't know. I don't know. I think she's just trying to get in the group. Uh, and the way Mike is smiling when she's kind of saying what she's, you know, I could be your Zoomer and she's kind of just skating around in, in a circle and stuff. I mean, they're definitely both enjoying the moment, but I don't know that they're flirting with each other, but. I, I don't think Mike is. I think um, Max is, and she needs to back off. Yeah. But I think she walked up, and Mike is smiling at Max. And uh, <laughs> <Oops. laughs> she, uh, as you would say, she yeets uh, Max off of her skateboard. Yep. She got wrecked. She did. Yeah. I, I wish she was still out there. Like, whenever he goes to open the door, mm -hmm. I wish... She was still out there. Yeah. I was going to say, where do you think she went? Of course, you know the answer to that. And I I don't. Like, I don't think she's going to go back to the cabin. I don't think she goes to her mom's house yet. I don't think she goes to the Wheeler's house either. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if she just goes and finds a place in the woods and cries. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I just don't know where she goes now. I, 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 Obviously, she'll she'll get found by other people eventually, but for now, I think she just goes and, and cries in the woods. That's what, probably what I would do. You cry in the woods? Every chance I get. Okay, then. <laughs> okay. So, Joyce is pretty freaking awesome. In season one, Joyce was the one who figured out how to interpret the lights. Joyce is the one who not only figured out how to interpret the lights, that they were a communication from the upside down. She's the one that figured out how to at first get yes and no answers out of Will. And then she did, she's the one that figured out the iconic, now iconic alphabet wall. And that was all impressive. Now in season two, she's the one that figures out that his drawings mean something and they match up with the backyard. And she's the one that figures out that that videotape from Halloween night has an image emblazoned on it of the shadow monster. She's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. I think she didn't really suspect anything though until, because she was just watching it because she wanted to see who the bullies were. Right. And then she discovered the shadow monster. Yeah. Yeah. She's got great observation skills. She's got good instincts. Okay. It looked like, so it had like the pause like the word pause in the corner uh -huh. and it, like she moved her hand and it looked like she like tapped it and it went away. But like, I know that that obviously didn't happen because they, they weren't touch screen, but like, I don't know. It looked like she like waved her hand or she touched it and mm. the word pause went away. And I, I don't know. I thought that was really weird. I watched that scene like 20 billion times. <laughs> I missed that. I didn't notice that. 
I thought it was hilarious though when she's trying to figure out how to get that VHS C that little small cassette player and she puts it into the VCR and you know it's just she calls Bob and just getting help. I don't know. So that was hilarious. Sounds like something mom would do. Yeah. Well, I mean, not just mom, but yeah, totally. And then Bob's like, yeah, you got to turn the top, 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 the coax on, top, 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 top. She's like, English, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was a good, it was a funny scene, I thought. Okay. When Joyce is, I, I want to mention one, one thing about the music here. When Joyce realizes that it's the shadow monster, like she realizes there's something on the screen and she's like chasing it or tracing it rather. The music kicks in. It's like, dear, 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 dear. I don't know how exactly how it goes, but it's like that dark, mysterious. I don't know. The music <laughs> drops right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That is so good. Like that music. The music. It's called The Upside Down. So that's the name of the song is The Upside Down? Yeah. Is that a carryover, I guess, from season one then? Or is it a. Is, did they remix season it a little one. bit for season two? Season one. Okay. I just don't remember it. I don't remember where they put it in season one, but man, in that moment, I thought it was a perfect song choice. I loved it. Let's talk about something we don't always talk about, and that's Steve and Nancy. I know you and I don't necessarily care a whole lot about that relationship, but there were some big developments in this episode, so we need to at least talk about it a little bit. And I'm thinking that you're starting to like Steve a little bit more and more each episode. You even chose him as one of your pop characters for today. You can't drop him on the floor now and act like it didn't happen. Like, she may have 18 of them in front of her now, but originally she had 11, and he was one of the 11. Just because he has a spiked bat and he's hurt. I think you need to face the reality that you now like Steve. No, I don't. I think you do. No, I don't. Okay. You can deny it all you want. I will never like Steve. (laughs) Okay. What did you think about Steve and Nancy's confrontation in the alley? We saw it in the trailer. Yeah. That's that's all you're going to give me? I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> um, it's not surprising. It's it's exactly what we thought when we recorded last week's episode, that it was kind of a continuation of their fight in the bathroom. She's now sober, and she doesn't even remember what she said. I thought it was interesting that Jonathan tried to cover for Steve. You know, she Steve tells her that Jonathan, her other boyfriend, took her home and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes and asks Jonathan about it, and Jonathan... He's like, well, yeah, I did that because Steve asked me to. It was just a complete lie. But I think Jonathan is just, he doesn't want to be the reason they break up. Like, it's clear that he likes Nancy. He's liked her since last season. But he and he wants to probably have his chance with Nancy, but he doesn't want to break them up and then move in. Like, he wants them to break up. Like, on their own. On their own and then move in. And I can totally get that, you know. So, I I think that's why he's trying to cover for Steve. What do, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's the reason. Because I wouldn't want to be the reason like two people break up too. Yeah. What surprised me though was that, so she sees the guy on his Walkman and she decides she can use that as her cover story and they got a Radio Shack and they get a new phone and they call Barb's mom. This surprised me. Why do they need a new phone? That's what I was confused about. Because at first I was like, oh, caller ID. They didn't have caller ID. What are they doing? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you remember last week we saw the flashback of the night that Eleven disappeared. That we saw them putting the scientists, FBI guys, or the government guys, sorry, uh, were putting bugs in the phones. Mm-hmm. So she thought she could just go to Radio Shack and get a new phone that they hadn't put a bug in and use that to call Barb's mom, and they would be none the wiser. That's what I think. Maybe. But the fact is, they've got the whole house tapped, you know, just like they had Joyce's house tapped back in season one. So they're going to hear no matter what. The other theory, or the other way that I think you could interpret this, is that she's trying to set a trap for the government guys. But that doesn't really make any sense to me. That certainly wouldn't require her to go get a new phone. So I think she just thought if she got a new phone, they wouldn't be able to hear her conversation. Okay, that's probably true. Yeah. All right, last part of the storyline we have to talk about is a little bit, just a tiny bit on Billy. I don't know. I don't know what to call her. This is girl. I was going to say girlfriend. It's not really, I don't know. It might be his girlfriend. It's I, awfully fast if it is. But anyway, he's with this girl at his car and they're waiting on Max. They give up on her and she refers to Max as his sister. And he says, Max is not my sister. Right. That's it. That's not the quote, but he says that Max is not his sister. What are your thoughts here? What are your theories on why he would say that? 
So maybe he's just like embarrassed of her. Like the same reason I don't want you and mom to hang around me all the time. Yeah. And then the second reason could be because like he's upset that he okay he said that it was her fault that they had to move the hawkins Mm -hmm. so maybe he's upset that she caused him to do that and okay obviously i know a little bit more about the relationship than you do right so you can't say too much but yeah okay that's that's the kind of stuff i love for you to do is to kind of tap into what your original thoughts were and i think those are those are both legit uh, theories. Um, it's and it's understandable for just like you said, you're embarrassed of your mom and I. That's natural. It's embarrassed for an older brother to be embarrassed of his younger sister. I'm not embarrassed of Colby though. Well, I love Colby. I embarrassed him. Yeah, exactly. He's embarrassed of you. Um, he, I've got a couple of theories too. I th- I think you remember back in the car last episode when they were about to kill the boys. Um, when he said, "Whose fault is it that we're here?" She said, "It's your fault." And then he was like, whose fault is it? You know, say it, say it or whatever. But maybe they're both right. What if, what if they're both special? What if they're both, uh, say, orphaned, for lack of a better phrase, uh, scientific experiments? You know, what if, what if they, they both were escaped from, from, you know, kind of, again, kind of going back to the fire starter analogy or, or a fire starter tie-in that we were uh, i was talking about last week where in that movie drew barrymore her parents had been experimented on and she had these special powers too so what if both max and and billy have special powers but they're not blood related they just both came from whatever this these science science experiments are were that made them special and i also if that's the case then i'm thinking okay well what made them end up in hawkins of all places why end up in Hawkins? You know, where all this is happening, where there's this lab, there's this other place that's experimenting on children. So maybe their parents brought them to Hawkins to be close to the lab, which would which would kind of fly counter to my theory of they're running from the government that I threw out there last week. But I don't know. It just seems too coincidental that maybe both of them are special and then both of them end up in Hawkins where special things are happening. So... But that's my best theory is that they're not technically brother and sister. They're both just special experiments that, you know, they, they came from this this program of some sort. Okay, then. Is that yeah. all? That's the best I can come up with. Yep. Okay. Any other thoughts on the episode? I think we've talked about all the all the different scenes and stuff. Again, the, the ending of it I thought was just fantastic. Any other thoughts from you? No, but I do think you should put them in chronological order. Yeah, we'll see if we can do something different next week. It is kind of a bummer not to end on the uh not to end on the cliffhanger scene of the episode. Alright, what was your rating for this episode? Ten library books, five of them overdue. Nice. I love that rating. Very creative. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. I gave it nine cans of Dr. Pepper. Why only nine? You know, I just felt like the episode moved a little bit slow. The ending was so fantastic. Again, I thought that Elle made some questionable decisions that were outside of... She's a very intelligent girl. I know she's she's got some pent-up angst, but I still felt like some of her decision-making was a little bit out of character. I felt like they, they wrote uh, Max hanging outside the room just so they'd have an excuse to have the door open and let Dart escape. So... Just a couple of little things in there that, that brought it down to a nine. But still a very, 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 very good episode. Maybe my favorite of the season so far. What? Is Dad changing his rating? What? This is, <sighs> that's weird. 900 cans of Dr. Pepper. My mistake. All right. Well, we're going to talk about Notes from the Upside Down, which is listener feedback. But before we do... Let's listen to a promo about Aero Squad, another podcast here on the Golden Spiral Media Network. Hey, this is Martin Flash. And I'm Cammy the Chameleon, and we're the hosts of Aero Squad. Join us here each Saturday during Aero Season for all the info and conversation about all of Star City's heroes. And villains. We'll be covering the highs. Oh man, did you see Dinah tonight? Once again, the stunt choreography was fantastic. And the lows. 
Now, if I could just be salty, Cammy, for a second. We'll be answering all your questions. And sharing all your thoughts and theories about what's going down with Team Arrow. So join us here each week. We are the Arrow Squad. Yeah, a lot of great stuff happening over at Arrow Squad. So go check out Martin and Cammy. They do a great job covering that show. Addy, you ready for some notes from the Upside Down? Yep. Please stop. <laughs> yeah, I can still see it on the screen. <laughs> I love dancing to that song. I always have. What back in the days when we used to play that song as part of our uh, Revolution podcast, I would dance every week. Jeremy would not, and it was even like all the way to the very end when we knew it was going to be the the last podcast because they had canceled the show. The most I could get Jeremy to do was a little dance with his finger, like he was the guy from Red Run. Red Run. Huh? The Shining. Yes, that's right. I've never seen it. Okay. Uh, let's start out with some audio feedback. We've got a couple of audios this week, and the first one comes in from Kelvin. Hello, Addy and Daryl. My name is Kelvin Dodge up here in Montana, great uh, Rocky Mountains. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just uh, calling. I uh, want to thank you very much for this great podcast you guys are doing. Uh, it's just a great format where you're kind of uh, comparing basically Daryl's perspective when he grew up and also the modern age with Addy and how each of those perspectives kind of is showing off with the love for the show. Um, I'm kind of a, more of an older, I guess, generation. Uh, I, I was born in 1990, not quite an 80s baby, but I grew up on a lot of stuff from the 80s. So the show just is great for all the interests that I have with movies, music, etc. cetera. And um, anywho, getting back to season two, episode three, um, originally when I watched this, I didn't think it was maybe as strong as the first two. Uh, but on my rewatch of the uh, sec or the season right now, um, it just is amazing. I love how it's a little solar paced. It's almost like the calm before the storm, but the storm does happen at the end of this episode. Uh, it's incredible. Um, we first get the just hilarious funny moment between Gus and his mom. He's trying to hide this find of his, but <laughs> and there's this great uh, little reference to Alien where his cat uh, kisses just like Jonesy from Alien. Incredible, and uh, just the character development's amazing. Hopper with Eleven showing some you know, relationship building there. Um, Bob um, really starts to grow me on this episode. I feel like now I realize, I, I start to realize like, hey, he's probably a good influence. Uh, I don't think there's anything shady going on here. And then um, his advice that he gives to Will is just great. I, at first it's kind of funny and, you know, maybe it's just kind of like a, adult advice for, you know, the general bullying thing. But in the final moments of the episode, uh, when the shadow monster is getting ready to... <laughs> I don't know, abduct him, you, you know, you don't know quite what's happening. They kind of compare that to when, you know, Bob is giving him this advice and Will stands his ground. Uh, you think it's going to work out maybe for a moment, but nope, uh, it does not. And it's just quite a storm at the end. So originally when I watched this, I thought maybe it was a little weaker, maybe 7 out of 10. But this time on my rewatch, I'm giving it a 10 classic vinyl records. And just want to say thanks again for the great uh, content you guys are offering to this uh, podcast. And, and uh, also just want to shout out, I also posted a picture on your Facebook page. And uh, if you guys catch that, maybe consider it for your contest. Anywho, thanks a bunch. And you guys enjoy your run of season two. Have a good one. All right. Thanks, Kelvin. We did get your picture. Very, very good picture. He's dressed up as Hopper. He has Diego's. And, uh, oh, that was him? Yeah. I liked that picture. Yeah, it was really good. And we did use it as a contest entry. Unfortunately, Addy didn't choose you. So don't blame me. <laughs> um, hey, at least I felt bad and you were like, <laughs> no second and third place. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he he gave us the answer of the cat. It was Alien. Alien. There you go. Yeah. I was close. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned a movie about an alien. Yeah. Colby. I mean, E.T. He fell from the sky, I'm telling you. Uh huh. All right, Kelvin, good to hear from you, man. And uh, hopefully we will hear from you again before the season's out or every week. That'd be great, too. Addie, would you like to take the first written feedback? So this is from Ben T. Hey, guys, Ben again. Episode three was really dang scary at the end, which 
when it happened, I was like, Bob, you idiot. <laughs> though, though I still love him, he had very stupid advice. That's true. Uh, <laughs> but still, the twist with the shadow monster on the TV was really good. Either way, Dart could have some interesting development. Anyway, and sorry, Addy. Until next time, stay strange. By the way, thanks for p- featuring me on the podcast. You're welcome. And you stole my outro again. <laughs> <laughs> ben has sent in feedback for every single episode from now to the end of the season. So we have, I haven't read them yet. I just got them tucked away uh, in each of those episodes. We kind of keep them organized. So uh, looking forward to hearing you steal Addy's sign off every episode between now and the end of the season. Uh, I thought it was really cool too. We didn't really talk too much about the shadow monster. Yes. Joyce found it on the TV, but I guess what that means is that the shadow monster is always there. Even in our dimension, we just don't really see him. Like the video camera had the ability to see something that the naked eye couldn't. Yeah. That's pretty creepy. And it also, um, I liked how you could see like will getting up mm-hmm. cause it was, cause whenever I first like watched that, I kind of thought, um, Oh, well, like what at that point, Will's kind of just a ghost. Mm-hmm. Cause, but then I was like, wait, how did um, Mike know where to find him? Yeah. Yeah. Also interesting here, Kelvin and Ben have a well, kind of opposing views on um, Bob's advice. I mean, one, I think both of them feel like Bob gave the advice in good intent. Although I, I disagreed with that. Uh, Bob's advice. I think all of us would agree. Turned out to not be good advice though. Which is one reason why I think he gave it on purpose. Let's get uh, to our next audio feedbacker. This one comes in from Mads. Hi there. My name is Mads and I'm a listener from Denmark. When I first started listening to a podcast, which I did after having watched season two, then for some reason in my head I imagined that Eddie looks exactly like Ill, which of course would be weird, but I don't know why I did that. I didn't have as clear an idea about Daryl in my head, but an obvious assumption could be to picture Hopper because of the father-daughter relationship that they seem to develop in Season 2. But now I've seen some pictures of you guys on your website and on Twitter, and it's nice to have some faces connected to the voices. About Season 2, I'd like to say that I think it's awesome that Sean Austin is on the show because of the Goonies, but also because of The Lord of the Rings. When those movies came out, I was about the same age as the boys on the show, and I was a huge fan of those movies. So in a way, the presence of Sean Austin creates a kind of a generation thing for me. Of course, not in the same way as the whole show does for those who remember the 80s, but it does something for me. So I really love that Sean Austin is on the show. Many of my favorite movies of all time are from the 80s. Some of them, which I've rewatched countless times, are the Star Wars sequels, the Indiana Jones movies, The Thing, The Breakfast Club, The Shining, and Die Hard. I'm not sure if Die Hard has influenced Stranger Things, but maybe we'll see Hopper run around with no shoes, killing some bad guys in some future episodes. But I'd like to ask you guys, what are your favorite 80s movies? I'm really enjoying your podcast, so thank you for that, and keep up the good work. Bye! Wow, how cool is this, Addy? Get uh, getting feedback from halfway around the world. Yeah, whenever uh, we listened to it the first time, uh, I, I, it was okay. It was pretty cool. You saw my facial expressions. It was it was really cool. Your facial expression was pretty awesome. Yeah, I like the accent. Yeah. So he said, um, and thanks for mistaking me with or thinking I might look something like Hopper. I cannot grow a beard. Uh, my voice isn't nearly that, that awesome. On the bottom of your che- I can grow a goatee, but that's it. I can't grow anything on my cheeks, my mustache. I haven't tried to grow it out in years. So the goatee is all I can do. Addy, he asked a question. Favorite 80s movie? You go first. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, because I've seen Gremlins. a lot of them. Gremlins is up there. Um, you know, the the Star Wars movies, most of those uh, of the original trilogy uh, are 80s films. So like The Return of the Jedi is one of my favorites. I, I, I For the longest time, I preferred Jedi over The Empire Strikes Back, although just slightly. In the, in the last few years, I've, I've come to appreciate 
um, The Empire Strikes Back and like it a little bit more now than Jedi. Um, Back to the Future is up there for me. I love that movie. That's when we, we actually own the whole box set. But if I had to pick one, and we're talking about from the 80s, my favorite would be from 1989, starring Jack Nicholson. I don't know who that is. Uh, directed by Tim Burton. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Music by Danny Elfman. And starring Michael Keaton. Say that stupid t- title already. Batman. What about you? Um, well, since no one likes Batman, um, it's not Batman. Uh, Lots of people like Batman, Addy. I don't know why. Superman's way better. Um, I like E.T. and I like Gremlins. I haven't seen that many 80s movies. Mm-hmm. You've seen the Back to the Future movies. You've seen Indiana Jones, all those movies. You've seen eh, really the like original uh, trilogy for Star Wars, although the very first one was 1977, so it doesn't count for this question. Wait, 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 wait. Is, what, what was the very first one? Was it the one with Little Anakin? Because I like the one with Little Anakin. The one with Little Anakin was made in 1998, something like that. I don't know the year it came out. We're talking about the one with with the very first Luke Skywalker. They blow up the Death Star for the first time. The second one, Luke, I am your father. The third one, blow up the Death Star again. Darth Vader dies. Spoiler alert, by the way. These movies are 40 years old. I hope that's not a spoiler. All right, pick. Um, Yeah, none of those. Uh, How about E.T. and Gremlins, like I've already said? Okay, so you've picked two. All right. Well, there you go. Well, thank you. And I, I know I mispronounced your name. Um, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So uh, it sounded like myths to me, but I don't want to like, I don't know. But anyway, thank you for calling and thank you for sending in your feedback and uh, hope to hear from you again. Yeah, seriously. You should send more feedback. That's awesome. Let's go back to our uh, written feedback here. This one come in. And again, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Is it Reynard? I'm going to go with Reynard. Uh, how would you pronounce it, Eddie? Reynard. Okay. Dear Daryl and Addie, I like how I put my name first. Uh, <laughs> I caught the Stranger Things bug a bit late, but I'm now caught up with you and completely obsessed. My wife watched it when season one came out. I only watched it out of my peripherals at the time, but uh, I just binge watched for three days, two of which while I was at work. Shh, don't tell my boss. I watched the first chapter of part two and when 11 appeared on screen with longer hair, I had to hold back the tears of joy while my coworkers asked if I was okay. My wife wants to watch the rest of part two together. So I stumbled upon this podcast while I wait. I really enjoy your show and I listened to all of part one episodes in one day. Wow. He binged our whole first season in one day. That's incredible. And he says, keep up the good work from a fellow Oki, Reynard. So yeah, he also joined our Facebook group. And when he joined, I was like, oh, cool. We got another Oki in our, uh, in our Facebook group. And then he sent in feedback and I was like, oh, cool. He sent in feedback. So thanks. Thank you so much. Did you know that the word Oki comes from, um, <laughs> uh, I learned this in English class. Um, okay. like the one thing I've actually learned in that class, cause it's really boring and I already know everything. So, um, it's a term that was used uh, by the people and uh, the people who lived in California um, during the time of the Great Depression, whenever people from Oklahoma were moving to California to look for jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, uh, they called us Okies, everyone who moved over there, they were Okies. And then um, everyone from Arkansas who did the same thing were called Arkies. Oh, I'm glad we're Okies and not Arkies. Hey, at least we're not from Texas. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to feedback. We got some stuff that came in via Twitter. You want to take both of those, Addy? Um, the one from Michael Hill. I'm sorry. I was scrolled down too far. Yes, that's actually Facebook. This is from... We started we start a discussion thread about every episode uh, on our Facebook page. And we'd love for you to come over and, you know, share your thoughts. That's a great way for you to send in your feedback. And so we started a discussion thread on the, on the polywog and, uh, we, we didn't have a whole lot of discussion, but this is what we got in from that thread. So Michael Hill says, um, very reminiscent of ET slash gremlins. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. 
So I said, my thoughts too, Dustin never should have fed Dart after midnight. And then um, Michael says, ha ha, and clearly he got him wet at some point. Also, notice they don't like the heat that may or may not come from bright light. To which I said, I'm thinking bright light since it's from the upside down where it's always overcast and low light. It's probably pretty sensitive to light. Could be a clue on the big monster's weakness this season. So I was speculating that the shadow monster, which is true. I mean, what puts out a shadow? Light. Just saying. Okay. So then Ruthie Rink says... I think it's actually heat related because the light in the turtle aquarium wasn't really bright. Uh, Those types of lights are designed to generate warmth more than light because that's what cold blooded creatures need. Yeah, and I think she's right. But Addy, as you pointed out, the one in the AV club wasn't necessarily a heat light. So and he didn't like that one either. So I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. I guess. And then we got a little bit on Twitter. Ken from Chicago says, this is in regards to our last podcast. Addie felt sorry for Steve. No, I didn't. Run, Daryl, run. Clearly she has been replaced with an evil doppelganger from the upside down. I don't, I don't feel bad for Steve. You (laughs) did last episode. I hope he dies. Mm, I don't believe you. I hope he dies. I hope he falls off the cliff. I think you have turned into Steve Team, uh, Steve Team, <laughs> or Team Steve. No, I'm not. I'm still yeah. team, team Jonathan. That's uh, never going to change. You're totally Team Steve, I can tell. Okay, I hate him less, but I'm still Team Jonathan. Okay, whatever. And one more. Um, Austin Lane 1 says, nice way to start the day. Image of him listening to our podcast. Yeah, so he attached an image of our podcast on his player. Nice, bro. Thank you, Austin. I assume Austin, whatever your real name is. Maybe you're from Austin. Okay. Well, that's all the feedback we got for this episode. We'd love to share your thoughts about next week's episode. And the way you do that is to uh, send us... Call in at uh, 304-837-2278 or our feedback page. Um, You can tell them that. Goldenspiralmedia.com slash feedback. And then... Uh, you can keep the conversation going on social media, and our Instagram is Stranger Things GSM, and I'll probably be inactive for, for a while. Um, <laughs> you know, <in> details. Um, <laughs> our Twitter is Upside Down GSM, and our Facebook is www.facebook.com/groups/StrangerThingsGSM. All right, so we'd love to have you join us over there and uh, pick up the conversation with us each week. All right, Addie, you know what's next. Quote of the week. Yeah. So what'd you pick this week? Um, the quote is, it was like a magnet or something pulling on my board. And Max says that. All right. Here it is. Why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you. How can I hate you? I don't even know you. Yeah, but you don't want me in your party? Correct. Why not? Because you're annoying. Also, we don't need another party member. I'm our paladin. Will's our cleric. Dustin's our bard. Lucas is our ranger. And Elle's our mage. Elle? Who's Elle? Someone. No one. Someone or no one? She was in our party a long time ago. She moved away, okay? She was a mage? What could you do, like magic tricks or something? Well, I could be your Zoomer. That's not even a real thing. It could be. See? Zoomer. Mind-blowing. Oh, come on, you know you're on the list. I... I... It's a simple question. Jesus, you all right? Yeah, 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 I think so. What happened? I don't know. It was just like a magnet or something pulling on my board. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah, totally sounds crazy. So why'd you choose this scene? Because she fell. (laughs) It wasn't because of Mike and Eleven almost seeing each other? Okay, it was also because I I like how savage um, Mike was being in this scene. Because he just straight up tells her she's annoying. Yeah. I thought you were going to say how savage Eleven was being. She's just like, fook. Yeah. See ya. I also like like that. She was just like, yeet. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, very cool. Well, I've got a couple of uh, cultural connections. I've been doing these each week with um, Justina. She's been sending in feedback and mentioning a few, and then I would kind of tag team on top of her, and she didn't uh, send in feedback this week, so... Uh, I've got, I didn't really catch a whole lot though. I, just in Dustin's room, there was an ET little toy, maybe a foot tall. Uh, there was also a centipede poster in Dustin's room. And then I saw a Ghostbusters sign in his room. All those, uh, I didn't pick up anything anywhere else, just in his room. All right then. All right. Well, let's talk about some news. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple of things for this week's Hawkins Report. Uh, the first one is, is Dacre Montgomery going to play Nightwing? Now, this comes in from uh, comicbook.com, and it's pretty interesting. It says that uh, Stranger Things star Dacre Montgomery has fans questioning if the actor is up for the role of Batman protege Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Nightwing, in Warner Brothers uh, DC Cinematic Universe. And the reason is that Montgomery posted a picture of Nightwing without a caption to his Twitter and Instagram accounts late Saturday. This was uh, a week ago. And then both posts have since been deleted. And so I don't know. I don't know if this story has been updated and I haven't seen anything else on it, but that'd be cool. I don't know if he could. I mean, I think he could, that, that came out wrong. I, I think he could pull it off. I don't know if he'd be my top choice for that. Like the thought of Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt that we got teased in one of the Christopher Nolan films, I thought that would have been a great choice. But if Dacre gets that job, I think that, that would be, I do think it'd be, you know, something he could do a good job at. So we'll see. Okay. And you want to take the second article? Yeah, I was actually looking at this earlier because I kind of want one too. Yeah. Um, but Stranger Things fans by... $400,000 worth of dinosaur hoodies. And this is from washfm.com. Is wait, is that the same Andrew that won their contest? Uh, I think it is actually. Uh, Andrew posted this story on our Facebook page. Yeah. So uh, just some of the article. So Dustin was wearing, it's like a dark blue navy color of uh, a hoodie. And it has like a, it's a brontosaurus skeleton. What kind of okay. What kind of dinosaur is that? It's a brontosaurus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, you asked. What episode was that in? Was that a? Uh, That's the first one. Episode one of this season. Okay. Yeah, fans are so obsessed with the show that they uh, they aren't just eating Eggo waffles, but they're also listening to the '80s music <laughs> featured on the series and getting inspired by the, inspired by the fashion from the show. <laughs> They're calling me out. Um, <laughs> in fact, one hoodie that Gaten Matarazzo, uh, his character Dustin wears, is so in demand that it's sold out. Um, I guess the Science Museum of Minnesota tweeted it, and uh, their caption was, Dustin, drum roll. Thank you for hanging in there. We're back in business. Get your apparel here. And then they have like the link to get Oh, to- cool. So you can actually buy one. Let's see if it's still in stock. I just clicked buy now. Ooh, they've got it in a hoodie, a t-shirt, a youth hoodie. Oh, they got more? A crew neck, a youth crew neck, and a toddler. And let's just take the adult hoodie. Uh, It comes in deep purple. Grab a large, add to cart. Hey, looks like it's in stock. I don't wear a large. (laughs) I was shopping for me. So then somebody else posted on Twitter, Kent Airdoll. I don't know who that is, but he he's verified. So um, the Stranger Things hoodie is sold out in all sizes, but 3XL at Science Museum store. Website already sold um, 80,000 too, despite being down early. Wow. It says they moved 10,000 of these things and brought in $400,000. That's sounds, a, about, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good sign for this show. I mean, this shows this shows that the show has, you know, commercial value. There's no doubt that, like Ego, I would, I'm sure they're paying for their mention in the show, and the, so that's one of the ways that the show makes money. And when a show has this much commercial appeal, that's going to help the show be that much more profitable. So. And even though it seems like the Netflix is committed to the show for the long term, it certainly doesn't hurt when a show 
is able to, uh, not that they're making money off these uh, sweatshirts. I don't think they are. What I'm trying to say is it, this is an example of, of how the show has impact on, and people are paying attention to what's being shown on screen, and that can turn into commercial dollars for the show. So that's really cool. Are you ready for the Mame of the Week? So for the meme of the, the meme of the week is um, when the, so the caption is when someone tells you they don't like Stranger Things and it's a picture of um, Eleven from season one and there are like little tiny captions like throughout the picture and it says I'm going to send you to the upside down the de- the, the demogorgon will find you mouth breather no it goes for you <laughs> that's true like how can you not like Stranger Things yeah like um, Brock and Aunt Missy, they don't like it. What? I know. I disown them from the family already. It's okay. All right. Well, we're going to have to have a serious talk with them at Thanksgiving. All right. We'd also like to have a serious talk with you about your thoughts. And on... you can send in your feedback at 304-837-2278 or our feedback page. And the uh, you can keep you can also keep the conversation going on our social media. And our Instagram is Stranger Things GSM. Our Twitter is Upside Down GSM. And our Facebook is www.facebook.com slash groups of Stranger Things GSM. And also the website is um, goldenspiralmedia.com slash feedback. So um, thanks for listening.